Hello folks. So, I thought I'd have another chat with you since it's been a wee while since my last uh, video in this style. So, today the big news is that Alex Jones, the host of Infowars, has been banned from several platforms. And there's quite a hullabaloo on the internet at the moment as to whether or not it's a free speech issue or censorship or what the actual ramifications of this are. Now, from where I stand, I don't really have time for Alex Jones and Infowars. Um, I think he's a bit of a joke, to be honest. He's like a bright red angry frog that vomits forth invective to the camera. And, you know, some people like that. He's become a bit of a joke. But, um... Sometimes when you don't take things seriously and just sort of write them off as a joke, that's where it can become dangerous. I mean, a lot of people wrote off Donald Trump as a joke and thought that he would never become president because, ho, 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 he's just a reality TV show host. What, could, what possible qualifications could he have to be president? And he got elected, possibly with Russian help, maybe... But Alex Jones, um, yeah, he's the punchline to a lot of jokes. He's become a bit of a, a meme factory. But the problem is, some of the stuff that he says, no matter how outrageous or libelous or disproven, will be believed and taken as truth by some of his followers and some of his listeners and some of the viewers of his videos. And particularly when he is outright lying or putting a spin on something in a negative way, that can really be dangerous. He is an influencer uh, because some people, well, he's preaching to the choir. You know, he is saying things that they want to say and they want to hear. So people agree with him. A lot of people don't as uh, he's found out as being, being uh, banned by these different social media platforms. And some people are saying that it's a violation of his rights to free speech. It isn't, though. I mean, YouTube is a private company, so they are under no obligation whatsoever to host his content. As Boogie2988 pointed out, YouTube has to pay to host and promote the content that the YouTubers create. And the advertisers are very skittish at the moment as to what advertisements they will place on certain products. And the advertisements are what generates the revenue for YouTube. So if no advertisers are advertising on YouTube, YouTube is getting no revenue. And that's a bad situation for them. And with some of the more offensive and outlandish claims that Alex Jones has made, like saying that uh, the Sandy Hook kids and their parents are crisis actors. Um, Kim Trails made the frogs gay. I mean, that's a, a standard meme one there. Uh, that's really dodgy stuff to say. And it would definitely make advertisers nervous to associate themselves with people who say those kind of things. So, you know, YouTube has no, you know, they don't have to. They're not forced by law to have to host this. Much like, in terms of free speech, if someone starts yelling uh, abuse or racial epithets or just horrible things, you don't have to stay there and listen to it. You're under no obligation. You can just ignore them, walk away, whatever. You know, that's how free speech works. They can say it, and you can defend their right to say it, but you don't have to agree to them, and you, you don't have to listen to them. So, I don't think Alex Jones will have any problems finding another platform for his uh, voice. He, there will be plenty of uh, right-wing websites that will host his content, and more play to them. I certainly won't be watching them. Um... But it's not a freedom of speech issue. 
Now, if he had have been in a public place and saying all his stuff, so out in a market square somewhere, and the cops came along and told him to shut up for whatever reason, then possibly that could be a freedom of speech issue. But in this case, it's YouTube and Spotify and the other company's decision because they're private companies. They're paying for the hosting. He's not paying them. So they are, have every single right to remove him from their platform. That's my two cents on the Alex Jones situation. And if anybody does watch this, no doubt I'll get people who, who vehemently disagree with me. And hey, that's their right if they want to. But once again, I'm under no obligation to read those comments nor reply to them. And hell, I could even delete them as I want because after all, it's my channel. So uh, what else what I wanted to talk about today is what I'm actually wanting to do with this channel. I sort of touched on it uh, a few months ago, about six months ago, with my uh, The Internet is Bull. Oh, my God, YouTube, what have you done video. In the past, I had done uh, videos where I sort of talked about some of the issues with YouTube. And I kind of touched on that a little bit with the Alex Jones stuff. But I try and steer clear away from doing that kind of content. For one thing, as I said in the previous video, I have to watch a lot of bad content that I don't necessarily want to watch in order to do re full-on research for those videos. And in this case, I have no real desire to watch uh, videos of Alex Jones. Not that you can find them on YouTube anymore because the InfoWars channel has been removed. But I've seen enough clips and bits and pieces and articles about him um, to know that I disagree with most of the stuff that he says and I don't really have time for it. But getting back to what I want to do for this channel, um, content. Now, what content am I going to put on here? I'm at a point now where I'm sort of burning to do more creative things. And I've been doing a little bit of that through my work, uh, where they've wrote me in to make uh, internal videos for them, or help them make internal videos. So I made a music video, uh, for the rebranding of my team and my company. Um, I might put a clip round about here. Come, let's fix the top to the pips and clicks on the pips and not by the pips. And as well as that kind of thing, I've also done uh, some other little promotional videos, like 30 second clips for presentations. And uh, tomorrow I'm being roped in to do another one along the same lines where um, it's a kind of an instructional video, I believe, where I'm having to utilize some green screen stuff, which I've not really done before. So it'd be interesting to see how that turns out. It might be orange screen in this case, judging by the background we've got in the office space there. But as I say, we'll see that comes how it comes out. Uh, it's a good excuse for me to play around with my editing software as well and try different things. And that's what I like to do in each of my videos is uh, to try something new um, where possible. Now, in this case, this particular video, I may not do much different or exciting at all um, because it's just me really talking to a camera with the occasional intercut. So Instagram video trying to create viral content on yet another fucking platform. So let's see how well I can do on here as opposed to YouTube or Twitter or Facebook. So let's make a viral video with the cat who you can't see because he's black and I'm wearing black. So he disappears. Do something viral, Radar. Do something viral, quick. Go viral. Go viral, buddy. Go viral. There's a butthole. Go viral, quick. Go viral, buddy. But uh, down here in New Zealand, it's sort of getting on to the middle of winter, so it's quite cold and wet, uh, which makes it a little bit problematic to go out and film things. I did have an idea of wanting to make a 60-second film every weekend, um, but I've got some issues with my equipment, to wit, I can't find my charger for my uh, camera battery, which makes it a bit harder to record things, because um, I'm recording this on my phone at the moment, and it's only got limited capacity, whereas on my camera I can put in an SD card and take it out, download it to my laptop. It's a bit more of a pain in the ass to do this with my phone. But hey-ho, that's the way it goes. And on top of that, you know, I want to do some more uh, narrative-based stuff, so actual proper short films telling a story. Um, 
So the last thing I did on here was The Right Hand Man, which I did for the London Sci-Fi 48 Hour Film Competition. Dream about sleep and you may receive your inner child. And that turned out okay, got to collaborate with some people um, that I've known for a long time that I hadn't worked with before, um, which was good. You know, it's always good to be involved back again in the uh, performing arts community down here in New Zealand. But I want to do more of it. And that's where my headspace is, because I've sort of been feeling bored and frustrated that I've not really been doing any of that. Um, just sort of sat on my ass and watching other people's content and I just want to make things I want to be creative I think it's a, an outlet for me um, it gives me something to focus on rather than just going to work doing the work coming home now doing something creative you're going out there and doing the work and coming home but it's something that I have something of a passion for. Now, whether I'm any good at it is another question, and uh, I'll leave that for you to judge. I make no claims to be a Spielberg or a Scorsese, or even a low-tier end trauma director. And that's something else actually I wanted to touch on as well, is the James Gunn situation. Once again, kind of tying into the free speech issue as well. So for those who don't know, and it's been all over the internet, so you probably do know as well by now. Um, so James Gunn got fired for, by Disney from the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise and from the Marvel Cinematic Universe as a whole. In fact, from Disney in general, um, because of nearly a decade old tweets that he sent out where he made jokes uh, involving child abuse and pedophilia and so on. Now, content is not necessarily an indication of intent. So, if I make a video where I say I've murdered loads of people and I'm going to murder a load more, it doesn't mean that I actually want to do that or have done that in the past. It's just me making a statement. Whether or not it's true is another question. And that's the same with James, you know, he has said these horrible, disgusting things, but he hasn't necessarily done them. So it's um, trying to say that there's a smoking gun when the gun doesn't actually exist, in my opinion, anyway. Now, if it does turn out that James Gunn is a pedophile and he has actually done some of the horrible things that he's joked about, then screw him. Basically, he deserves everything that he gets. But this trial by social media that he's undergoing, um, it, it, it does make me laugh in some ways that some people seem to conflate the idea of being a movie director to being that of a babysitter. So they'll be saying things like, I would never trust James Gunn to look after my children. Well, he's not applying to be your babysitter he's a movie director but anyway you can't change some people's minds no matter how much you talk to them but it's telling that the uh, entire main cast of the guardians of the galaxy franchise have come out in support of him that's really saying something and it speaks to the fact that he has changed as a person over time now going back to alex jones if alex jones decided not to be such a vile, hate-spewing warthog and cleaned up his act and 
you know, became a bit less cray cray, then, hey, let him come back to YouTube, you know, if he can keep his um, craziness in check, then by all means, let him have his voice again on the YouTube platform, you know, as long as he follows the guidelines, which he repeatedly violated, which is one of the reasons he got sacked, then all power to him. Now, Disney is in a tricky position with James Gunn, because whatever they do, it's going to damage their brand and also damage the brand of Marvel and the Guardians of the Galaxy. If they don't rehire him, people are going to get pissed, be pissed off about that. If they do rehire him, people are going to be pissed off about that as well. And in either case, they're either going to boycott the film, so whether James Gunn directs it or not. Um, so, yeah, it puts them in a really tricky situation. And possibly, if they do end up rehiring them, James may well have a, a legal case uh, against them. But we'll see how it plays out. I mean, James apologised again. You know, he's very contrite about that, and he accepted his punishment. But there's a lot of back-pushing. And people will compare this to the Roseanne situation, but the Roseanne thing was somewhat different. You know, this um, muck was dredged up about James Gunn from 10 years ago, or 8 to 10 years ago. And, um, you know, he deleted the things. He'd apologised for them beforehand, so Disney knew about them. But just the fact that this uh, Cernovich Pizzagate wanker resurfaced them and it sort of all blew up in their faces again. And perhaps Disney was a little bit uh, too quick to act on that. But Roseanne... Now, Roseanne was a bit different. So, her tweet was then, or at the, you know, it was like a there and then, and it was directed at someone, and, you know, a racist comment comparing someone to an ape, as I recall. Um, yeah, she, that's very different to what James was saying, and in a lot of cases the tweets weren't actually directed at someone, you know. Oh, hello, i got a visit from the cat. Hello, Radar. What do you want? Meow. So, yeah, did she deserve to be fired? Yes, she did. But if she can show that she can clean up her act and, you know, be contrite in her apologies, then, sure, she should get a job back, you know, be able to do what she does. You know, forgiveness. Seems to be in short supply these days for some people. But anyway. Right, so I've waffled on for about 16 minutes, so I'm going to end the video now, because it looks like the cat wants attention. So, I'm going to end it there. I'm probably not going to edit this too much, I'll probably drop in the clip of the music video and that's about it. But let me know if you enjoyed this kind of thing, and maybe offer suggestions for what kind of stuff you'd like to see me talk about. Would you want me to see me talk about personal things, or would you want me to talk about um, other issues of the day? And uh, I'll take them under advise them, advisement and uh, go from there. All the best to everyone. Take care.